Hey Track Gang, what's going on in this week's episode of the Beauville in Newtown? Well, it's right over here. Stand by and we'll get into what's happening this week. Hello, Track Gang, and welcome to episode 10 for 2023 from the Beauville and Newtown. I'm Ray, and it happens to be Saturday, uh, February, I'm sorry, February. Yeah, don't I wish. March 18th, jeez and crackers, um, got a bit of a mail call. Um, this uh, came from this box here, <clears throat> came from Lynn McCurdy over at the HD... MMRC, that's the High Desert Modular Model Railway Club. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I got that out because that is a mouthful. Sorry, I went off camera. But the only thing I've done with this box is taking the shipping label off of it. So anyway, we're going to open this bad boy up and see what Mr. McCurdy has sent over. Um, I kind of know what's in here, but... <laughs> nice. Okay, so I believe that there will be a full set of New Haven passenger cars, which is going to look awfully nice behind that E33, because that's where I plan on putting them. And uh, there's a <laughs> sticker from the uh, High Desert Modular Model Railroad Club, the HD MMRC. Um, I'm not going to open up the little box yet because I want to get to, and these appear to be an older Atherin blue box, which is nice um, because they'll be easy to put KDs on, which these have already, looks like they've already got KDs on them, although this end, there's a couple are missing, but that's fine. I've got parts to fix that. So we've got a, um, that's an REA. A railway Express Agency car. That's a coach. And then I bet you the last one's going to be a baggage. No, it's another Railway Express. So we got two REAs and a uh, coach car, which is cool. Like I said, I, I would imagine that those will look pretty good behind the E33. Now let's take a look and see what's in the other box. Because this one here, I think is... <laughs> nice. All right, so we've got ourselves a um, probably a lifelike or a Bachman uh, 50 foot boxcar from the New Haven. This is something that I have been looking for for a while, actually. Um, is that color scheme from the New Haven? Um, that was an unusual scheme. Uh, this happens to be a this is an old Marks car. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And of course, somebody's already modified it with KDs, which is great. It's going to need wheels. But that again, that's not a big deal. I've got parts. And this is an old Gilbert. Interesting. So I've got a Marks car and a Gilbert car. And... This here looks like, again, somebody has modified it, put the KDs on there, which is nice. So this is just going to need a set of wheels, and I think this is going to need just a little bit more than just a set of wheels. I think the trucks are going to need to be tightened or loosened a little bit, but that's fine. The big thing was was the passenger cars, but these, these New Haven cars are nice. I, I Like I said, I've been looking for that particular paint scheme from them for a while because it was unusual. I think... And the New Haven folks can correct me if I'm wrong. One of these, and I don't remember if it was the white on the black or if it was the orange, but one of them was called the McGinnis Scheme. And I have a hard time remembering which one was which. But at any rate, that is very cool. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, I will keep my eyes open uh, for uh, 
things that uh, I could possibly send your way. Because I believe that that was part of the deal. So I will definitely keep my eyes open for stuff. And um, as you all know, we've got a <clears throat> train show coming up the end of April. To which I'm hoping I can make it to. Because I've got a bit of a caveat. Um, somehow or other, within the last couple of days, um, I've managed to pull something in my back. And... Um, I'm not sure what I did, but it is extremely, <laughs> if I'm standing, I'm fine. If I'm sitting, I'm fine. It's going, it's the transition from the sitting to the standing or the standing to the sitting that's a problem. So maybe I just won't, maybe I just won't sit or you know, make that transition. I don't know. Um, I'm going to see how things go. Um, like I said, I think I just tweaked something, but it has been... The last, especially the last 24 hours, have been really, really, really interesting. Um, actually, really today. Uh, last night bowling wasn't pro wasn't a problem, but boy, when I got up this morning, yeah, not fun. Any rate, um, we're going to get back to the bridge build um, here in a bit, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because it's still sitting over at the layout. Uh, in place, but I still have work to do on that. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put these New Haven cars back on the bench, and uh, we're going to get back to working on the bridge. So uh, we'll be back in a bit. Oh, before I forget it, though, I would be remiss if I didn't say something. Um, episode 9, which was part 4, um, I really, uh, really, really appreciate all the positive comments um, and uh, I actually <clears throat> posted uh, to my Patreon page and to my uh, and to the friends of the Beauville and Newtown before the video actually dropped uh, three pictures of the bridge. And I know that there was at least one comment that was like, uh, "I if it, I didn't know any better, I wouldn't know that that was two separate bridges," which made me feel really good that I, I'm on the right track. <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, I've got some other work to do. Um, I'm going to show some of that in this video. Um, as I mentioned at the end of video, or at the end of part four or episode nine uh, for this year, um, I got a feeling that this is probably going to go at least maybe six parts before it's done. Um, I apologize for that ahead of time, but there's a lot of intricate work uh, going into this, number one. Number two, there's a lot of repair work going in because of the fact that the first time, and it's nothing against what we did back in 2020, but I got behind at one point because of having issues putting the track on the bridge deck. And when I got behind, I started pushing myself to get things done a little bit quicker. And when I did, I made mistakes. Since I've got more time with it now and I had to rebuild the bridge, now's a good time to go back and f correct those mistakes. And I've mentioned that in the videos up to this point. So that's what's going to continue to happen. This thing could go six, seven, eight, nine, ten parts before it's all said and done. I hope it doesn't, but... Um, I want it to be right, especially since where it sits, um, you know, being right at the bottom of my steps. Those that have been over here know exactly what I'm talking about. Those that have seen the intro videos in the past know what I'm talking about. And the reality of it is, is once I get this thing fixed and I get the scene over there somewhat completed, I am going to do another walk-in video uh, to the room down here and explain the things that have been changed and have gone on because there are there have been a few other changes uh, over the past year or so um, minor changes some track arrangement moves and things of that nature um, one other thing of note <coughs> is I am probably once I get the bridge back together and the main lines are running again and I get finished the maintenance on all the locomotives I am going to run um, another ops session um, I've got some ideas as to how I want to do that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make them a part of the episodes 
or if I'm going to do them off to the side. And I may break them into, into parts. Um, we'll see how that evolves. Um, like I said, I've got some ideas, but that's possibly something else that's going to be coming later on this year, mainly after I get done with this bridge. So speaking of which, we're going to stop here for a bit so I can get to work on the bridge. So we'll be back. I have been battling with the bracing on top of this bridge because we talked about the original cross braces, these guys, um, that are obviously way too short now and I don't have enough of them. Um, so I had thought of originally making it to where it just went from one edge to the other, one edge, you know, so on, it's still laced as it is now, but only going, you know, making one box across, you know what I'm saying? So it would only be, there would only be one set of cross braces. The problem with that was trying to come up with the angle. And um, that wasn't going to work. Uh, I went ahead and I actually cut pieces of the sprue that I was going to lay in there to try and line everything up and then put the bracing on top of it. That just wasn't going to function. So... Um, I had the pieces that I had a lot that, that Central Valley had sent, the extra pieces, and I just cut a bunch more of them out, and I came up with this idea. The only problem that I can see with doing it this way, this looks freaking awesome this way, by the way. Um, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera, but, I mean, the way that I've got this thing laid out at the moment, this freaking looks bad butt. Let's go ahead and put it that way. I'm not going to say the other word, but this thing really looks awesome with that lacing up top. The problem now becomes, in the middle part, there's, they're all overlaid over top of each other. I'm thinking that the best way to do this is to line these up, and I just kicked the tripod, I'm sorry. Uh, I, as I mentioned last night, I'm still having issues with my back. It feels a lot better today, but it's, it's still not where it's supposed to be. But at any rate, the more and more I'm thinking about this, the only way that I'm going to get this lacing to line up and look halfway decent is, number one, I'm going to have to start from this middle point. I can't start from the ends and work in because the ends are different. For whatever reason, I think it's because of the fact that I use two different bridge kits. The, the back and the front don't line up 100%, which isn't a big deal, but um, it's becoming a problem. But to make it look halfway decent and to make it look right, I think I'm going to have to start with the center beam and work my way to either end, which, like I said, is not a huge, huge issue. But like I said, though, this inner piece is going to be a bit, this is going to be a bit of a pain. And I'm thinking what I may have to do, and once we get gluing here, I'm going to probably end up having to cut the, um, um, the plates off the ends. And just use, you know, I've got other, other spare parts, I believe, still floating around here someplace. One of these, one of these sprues has got... Um, rivet plates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven on there. And that's it. So I've got seven left. One, two, three. I would only need, well, one, two, three in the middle, and then I would need five of them to go ahead and dress up the end pieces. The other interesting thing with the way that this is laying out at the moment, the end beams have already got those riveted pieces on there because that's how I'm holding them up. Uh, so I would only have to, I would have to cut, you know, this, this cross brace a little short to get it, get it where it needs to be. But like I said, I'm thinking that this is definitely the way to do this now. Um... 
so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and remove all this. <laughs> this is like playing this is like playing pickup sticks uh, because every time I laid them up there, you know, they would fall again. But this this lacing looks freaking ridiculous. Um, and to a point too, it's going to hide some of the imperfections and the flaws that this bridge inherently has because of it being um, reworked in the process. Um, sorry, my I, I texted my I was I, I was calling for my daughter to get her opinion on this, but um, yeah, this. I think this is the way to do this. So it's going to be start with the middle and line it up. The only other problem is the fact that because the back uprights are glued, I cannot glue these these uprights back here or these these cross braces on the back side unless I decide I'm going to glue the front one. And I'm really beating myself up as to whether I want to do that or not. Because um, I just found when I went to take this thing off the layout and bring it over here. Actually, I'd taken the front off by itself because I wanted to try and fix this. This, this beam over here isn't square. Um, and I was going to try and get it to where it was, but it's, it's not cooperating. Um... Hmm. So I think, like I said, I think the plan is is to go ahead and just start with the front and just start glue and bracing and, and see where we end up. And we'll go from there. So we'll be back. Okay, try gang. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's it's pretty much together um, I did have to do some really unique rigging and it looks like at least two pieces of the rigging that I decided to fit that I decided to rig up are, are going to be okay sort of I may have to do some uh, some work on that one Actually, I'm going to have to do work on all three of these because they don't, they're not lining up the way that they're supposed to. And I just knocked that one out of position. Um, that's okay. Because those back braces aren't even, they aren't even glued in, so it's, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Now, if I could just figure out why... This thing doesn't want to stay locked in on the front, but that's okay. It's, it's like I said, it's. I think I think I know what's going on here, and it's just the fact that it's the way that the, this bridge kind of went back together. Um. Any rate, um, had some really unique. Things that I, I know I'm moving the the whole thing here, but I, I want to get in here a little bit tighter if it'll let me. Okay, um, putting these this this cross bracing across the top was a bit of a bear. Um, and I talked about that earlier where I decided to start from the middle and go to the outs, you know, go out to either side from there. Now, one of the things that I came across, and I don't know why it happened. I don't know how it happened. I, I, I don't understand it because this thing is basically pretty much square. But the bracing on this side ended up being a little shorter than the bracing on this side. So this one here ended up being a bit unique um, as to how I went ahead and manipulated it to get it the way I wanted it. It works. You can't really tell, but if you were standing here in front of it, you'd notice that this section is a little shorter than the section on the opposite side. The two middle sections are exactly the same. Um, like I said, I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but it did. 
I'm not quite sure what went on there, but regardless, it, it works. Now, one thing I did, and I'm going to actually show this because I think this is going to be one of those things that's really going to set this off. And I'm just going to back out of here a little bit. And we're going to drop these in place. Now, these are the ones that came off the bridge originally, obviously. And when I was playing with this earlier, now, the original bridge did not have X-bracing here. It just had bracing going in one direction. And had it going, I believe, in this direction. Uh, from here, from the middle to the outside, from the middle to the outside. Um, and I talked about the fact that I believe I've got enough parts here that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this X bracing. Now, where is, I know I've got plenty of parts here somewhere. And of course, some of these are, some of these I still have to, I either have to fix or I'm just going to replace, but regardless, because these were, some of these are the ones that got broke when I was trying to do this the first time uh, on the original bridge build, not this, not this build. But the original bridge build, when I was breaking them, getting out of the out of the sprue. But you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to take that one back out because that one's broke. But you get the idea as to what this thing is going to look like with the X bracing in there. Um, I think it's going to look freaking awesome, to be perfectly honest. Now, one of the other things that you're probably going to notice is that, and from this angle you may or may not, but if you look inside of both bridges now, both bridge decks, there is that aluminum C channel. Um, I decided after running a couple locomotives across this the other night, um, I decided that there was, even though there wasn't any sag or bow, Considering the fact that both of the bridges are now one bridge, it made sense to just go ahead and, and put the other one in. So what I ended up doing, and I didn't show it because it was a bit of a, a little, actually a little bit of a disaster. Um, I actually took a plastic cutoff disc um, that Dremel has, and I just cut the slots in that other bridge. Um, so that I didn't have to take it all apart again, because otherwise I would have, and to be perfectly honest, if I would have known that I had that darn bit to begin with, I would have done the other bridge the same way, because sitting there, you know, sawing and cutting and cutting and sending and then filing it back, no, that was a pain in the butt. And this here was zip, 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 and it was done. Um, but anyway... So now the, the C channel is up underneath of both bridges, and this thing is solid. It is not going anywhere. Um, so that's basically it. Um, obviously, the next thing is, is to finish off the cross bracing for the front, uh, put the cross bracing in the rear. I, like I said, I do have a couple minor little idiosyncrasies with the upper bracing on the back bridge because it's not glued to it. Um, that I'm, I'm going to have to figure out something with. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, and then I want to go ahead and fill in, um, you know, the, the tops of these girders. I want to fix a couple of these girders down the bottom. Now, I'm glad I didn't do this ahead of time because the reason why these gaps were bigger on the, on the front girder is because that's where the cross bracing has to land. If I would have filled those in, it wouldn't have fit. In fact, I actually had to go back and open one of these up a little bit more because it wasn't open enough to be able to accept that cross brace. 
So, like I said, I'm glad I didn't go through and, and cover all these holes back up. Um, let's see, what else is there? I think that pretty much is going to cover this. I do have a couple of little things, like cosmetic things I want to go back and fix. I've got the, um, when I took this thing apart, the upper angle piece here broke off. Um, I'm going to have to make something for that. Um, that riveted corner. Um, I've already fixed a bunch of the other little idiosyncrasies on this thing, but um, yeah, uh, did, when this thing finally does get a coat of paint, <laughs> and unfortunately the weather has not been very cooperative. I mean, it was it was funny. It was actually warm like Thursday, and of course I was working. So, and, a, and some folks would be like, well, just spray, you know, and, and your bed. And no, I can't spray in the basement. Um, this, this was done with a rattle can, and I am not using a rattle can in the basement because this happens to be where my furnace sits. So that's not a good thing. That's not a good idea. Uh, so other than that, um, like I said, I've got a couple minor little cosmetic things that I need to go back and work on now but uh, this bridge it's ready to go back on the layout now before I go too much further I do want to show one thing I did talk about the fact that the front of this along with the top is removable well all you have to do is kind of tease this and of course now that I put the cross bracing in there it just got a little little bit more unique but you just have to pick up one the uprights just a little bit and the front comes off with the top and then you've got that um, so this will make it nice for when I have to clean the track or do whatever um, I'm not going to go put this back at the rear over at the uh, railroad yet because like I said there are those couple of, of cosmetic things I want to fix I also noticed that there's a couple of cosmetic things on the base of this that I want to kind of straighten out before I put it back in place. Um, but uh, yeah, and I know I was just on Rick Bailey's stream. It does happen to be Sunday. Uh, side in it. the night was sidetracked Sunday. It's the 19th. It was on Rick Bailey's channel, and um, you know we were we he was sitting there talking about building wood kits, and I'm like, well, at least you didn't try to. Uh, kit bash a Central Valley Model Works bridge. <laughs> but, you know, as everybody has said, that, that, I mean, the, the, the comments and all that I've gotten from everybody have been absolutely, absolutely positive, and I really do appreciate that. So the next thing is going to be trying to get those, those thin pieces out of the sprue without breaking them and putting them together and then making all the cross bracing and finishing up those couple, couple of cosmetic things and this son of a gun is basically ready for the road. Alright, I realize that this is way zoomed in but it's the only way I can kind of show you what is going on here. Um, so what we've got is these really thin pieces that are inside of this, this sprue and the camera might move because I'm kind of up against it, but that is, that's what it is. Um, I found the best way to get these off the sprue is a chisel tip. Um, I, the last time I did this, I did it with a set of side cutters, and it kept snapping them. So that was when I built the bridge the first time. So what I'm doing is, is I've got the, the flat side towards the piece that I'm trying to save, and then the beveled edge against the, the sprue and I'm just very lightly going down the connection point and basically knocking or removing this from the sprue. Um, these are very delicate parts um, number one and I'm sure that you probably didn't see any of that because my big hand was in the way but uh, what you end up with are these really small pieces and uh, the other thing is is there's also an awful lot of flash so what you can do is take the flat edge and get up against the edge of this thing 
and clean it up. Actually, I, this one here doesn't look to be too bad. Some of the ones that I did last night, they were an absolute mess. Um, so, then, well, since this one's broke, it's going to be a little bit tougher to do. But I'm going to try to explain this. Each one of these, there is a little socket. And on the opposite one, there's a pin. So there's a pin on one side and a socket on the other. So there's a socket here and a pin here. You have to line the pin up with the socket or they don't go together right. So what you want to do, once you have the spot, is drop a little bead of glue on there. And then very carefully find your find the end and drop it on there. And like I said, this one here is going to be a bit tricky because it's already broken in half. But I got it. And then this side should be a socket. This side should be a pin. We're going to just drop another little bead of glue. And for this, I'm not, before I was using the, um, uh, a fast set CAA, basically crazy glue, uh, for this, because of the fact I wanted a little bit of working time to make sure that I get everything kind of lined up here as best as I can. Just like that. Voila. Now I'll wait for that to dry and that part that broke, I'll go ahead and put a drop of glue on it. It's going to be on the back side, so nobody's going to see it anyway. Um, that was the whole point of putting the broken ones on the back side. If you put them up front, you're going to see them. If you put them in the back, nobody's going to know about them unless, of course, they watch the video. So um, once, that, once this dries up a little bit, we'll go ahead and we'll glue that broken spot. And then I'll put the rest of this together and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So, uh, we'll be back. Alright, track gang. Let me see if I can explain all that was done to this thing um, at this point. Um, let me see if I can find something halfway decent to point with here. That would be, that would be optimal. Um, <laughs> all this stuff sitting over here and I don't have anything that's not shiny or dark. Anyway... Okay, we're going to try the pencil. <laughs> and we're going to try and get a little bit closer. Um, sorry for the quick movements, but it is what it is. Okay, now, one of the things, and I don't know if it's even going to show up on the camera. Um, these upper braces. Remember I talked about the original ones that went up underneath, these guys. Um, I took the new ones and I cut them. Actually, I took some of the old ones and cut them as well. Um, what's really neat is there is detail in here that you probably can't, that the camera is not going to pick up. I'm going to try to zoom it in a little bit, but I don't think it's really going to get you there. Um, and I can't tilt down any further. The uh, the arm of the uh, the tripod's in the way. Anyway. The way that I did this is that there is a set of rivets that come in on this angle, and then there's another set of rivets that are straight. Well, it makes a neat little pattern up on top of here, all the way across. Now, one thing that kind of threw me off, and I'm not sure how I managed to do it, because I went off the plans originally when I built the box, when I built the, the side girders, but for whatever reason, this end... That's not even on camera because I zoomed it in too much. Let's try to zoom back out here, Ray. Okay. This box, this area here, is smaller than the box over here. And I have no idea why. The angles are all the same, the whole nine yards. No idea how this of the cross braces ended up different than the braces over here. But whatever, it's not a big deal. It looks awesome in person. And once I get a coat of paint on this thing, it's going to look even better. Uh, because right now it looks like a, uh, 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 I'm not sure what you want to call it, a patchwork quilt. 
Um, and like I said, now you can actually see, I did take that other piece of C, or the other part of that C channel, and I put it underneath of the other bridge, the new bridge, too. So now both of them have got the same bracing. Although with the new bridge, I left the original strengtheners inside, or the stiffeners inside. Obviously, we just got finished talking about these cross braces. Originally, there was only one set of cross braces in here. Since I had the parts, they're now it's a, now a big X on the front and on the back. Now, with the ones on the back that were broke, obviously I glued them back together. The other thing that I did is with the back, since it's immobile, the back ones are glued. They're not going anywhere. The front ones are not. One of the things that still bothers me a bit, and you can't see it unless you're in person, the bridge, for whatever reason, has a warp. And I'm not talking about the bridge deck. I'm talking about this bottom girder here. The bottom girder has got a bow, and I don't know why. I've tried to straighten it. I've tried to get it back in place. It's not sitting on the ears the way it's supposed to. That's why when I first started this part of the video back up, I said I'm really half tempted to glue this thing 100% and be done with it. Um, I think I'm actually going to wait until after I paint it and see how it looks. If it's not working the way I want it to, the front's going to get glued and the whole thing's just going to come apart and come off the layout in one piece. Which means that if I have to do any type of scenery work or anything over there, I'm not going to be able to run trains, which... Come to think of it, if I'm over there doing scenery work, I'm probably not going to be able to run trains anyway. So, <laughs> five parts <laughs> to get to this point, and we still have two more things that have to be done. Number one, it has to be painted. And Dwight Curley from the Curly Express, I know you asked me what that color is. I haven't gotten into my paint cabinet yet to tell you what it is. I can tell you that it was Krylon. You may have to go back to the original build crew, or actually look in my videos uh, from 2020. Actually, there is a section for the Central Valley Model Works Bridge. I believe I tell you what color this is in that video. Um, I have to go back and look, but you can look through. If I find it, I will put a link to that video in this one, so that way you can find out what the color was of the bridge. It was painted this way because there are bridges within the area around me that are painted this color blue or blue green or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to stop here for a second and uh, we'll be back. Uh, holy moly. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this may have been a challenge to build or to rebuild but I tell you what man if that thing doesn't fit the part over here holy cow I'm sorry I, I, I'm number one impressed with myself because this is the first kit bash that I've ever done and I probably picked the hardest freaking thing does this sound familiar people uh, aka Mr. Bailey over at the Folds Bailey Model Railroad Pick the hardest thing to build first. Well, this was my first kit bash, and I tell you what. Wow. Holy moly. Now, I don't have the bridge deck, or the, yeah, I don't have the bridge deck 100% in place. It's pretty close. Um, I just wanted to set it in here and see what it looked like, because obviously, one of the next things is, is not only do we have to get a coat of paint on this thing, we've also got to go ahead and put the bridge abutments underneath it there and I haven't had a chance to go up to my garage and get my saw see anyway um th this this thing is just that is just incredible I mean like I said I'm not trying to drum myself up and and anything like that but this thing is just flat nuts Nothing like re-engineering a bridge. And I'm sure that the the fellow, and I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but the fellow that originally started Central Valley, I don't think he ever had any idea that somebody would be stupid enough or crazy enough 
to take one or two of his 150 foot bridges and make them into a dole, uh, dole track bridge. That was until I came along. <laughs> Because believe it or not, folks, I actually, and I'm trying to, there's a piece of wood on the floor that I was messing with the other night, and it's in the freaking way, and I'm trying to get it out of the way. Um, I actually went looking the other night, and apparently nobody else has attempted to, to, to kit bash <laughs> one of these bridges. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, if anybody is considering trying this, practice on something else first <laughs> because this thing this thing has been a challenge and a half and you've all seen what I've gone through to get to this point but man does that look good sitting there unbelievable well we're gonna stop here for a second uh, we'll be back you're gonna have to pardon the dog they're they're, they're upstairs uh, my daughter and the wife and I guess they're playing a game and he's letting them know about it. Anyway, um, it's now 9.30 on a Thursday. This ha video has to get out <laughs> for 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I need to get cracking. I wanted a picture of the bridge in the background. I'm sorry. I'm still awestruck at this thing. <laughs> what a pain. Um, like I said, there's going to be at least two more parts, possibly three. Um, one of the things that I did come up against... Um, that I hadn't planned on that I, well, it was something I wanted to work on, but it's not going to work the way I wanted it to. And that is the guardrails, um, or the guide rails. Um, this does not have, this bridge deck does not have the tie plates for it. Um, and I was going to try to eyeball it and, and NMRA gauge it or come up with a jig to be able to put it in there. And the more I thought about it, the more I've looked at it, I'm like, I'm not even going to go there. Um, so at some point in the future, I'm probably going to be changing out the bridge ties on here to the bridge ties that actually have the tie plates for the guard or the guide rails. Um, that was going to be one thing. Obviously, there's going to be another part. So when I go to paint this thing, that may not be a full part, but it'll be something um, that'll probably be around the same time that I finish up the bridge abutments, but this thing's gone on too long. You all know the deal. Wait for the highball. Green tracks ahead or green bridges ahead. <laughs> we'll catch you all next time. Be safe. God bless. We will see ya.